Okay. okay, this was just a little quick one on the nasty problem that we always face on the construction side of things. Subgrade, very brief overview. And another point that this option's not 100%, some bits of this are minorly doctored, but only minorly. Okay, when you're in the construction game, there's one thing that's really unimportant, unimportant and that's the design surface. It's because you mightn't get there for years, or in some cases, you mightn't even get to build it. You do all the hard work and someone else gets to come and do the paving. So, of course, the very important thing in construction is the subgrade, because that's the thing you've got to get down to before you do anything else. And it's even nastier because at tender stage, when you're doing all that sort of stuff, you've got to try work out volumes. And in some situations, the, the subgrade volume in part of the overall construction mass hall is absolutely crucial and critical. And of course, it's really simple. It's anyone who's done it knows that it can be quite an ugly thing to work out. So just as a little quick overview, basically in earthworks, there are three earth types of formations. Now, again, I'm using New South Wales terminology here, but it's pretty much similar Australia and New Zealand wide. So you've got the pavement up top, of course. There's pavement that can be concrete, asphalt, deep lift asphalt, seal, etc., etc. Underneath that pavement, you'll have some sorts of selected materials. Obviously, there's going to be something decent there that just to hold things and hopefully make it last 20, 30 years. Now, the three basic formations. The pavement can be in cut, so your road's in the middle of a big hill. So that's cut. It's pretty straightforward. You just sit in there and not much to it. It's what we call, generally tend to call embankment. Embankment when it's in the pavement is well in fill, like you're three or four metres off the ground. And then there was what we call, tend to call shallow embankment, which as anyone knows is where it starts to get a bit nasty. You're above the ground, but geez, you know, the ground might be fairly ordinary. You've got to do different things. So the treatments of this stuff. When you're in cut, it's normally fairly simple. You just stick the dozer in there, rip another 300 mil, thump it all back together again, and away you go. It tends to be fairly straightforward. When you're in embankment, it also tends to be straightforward. You just put a lot of material in there, then you'll put a bit of decent stuff underneath the pavement, and away you go. Shallow embankment, that's when, the, again, the road's not far above the ground. It invariably means you'll have to come in, excavate extra material out, refill it, put drainage mats in. There's all sorts of stuff, but it's, it's generally a lot more work. But of course, there's all other sorts of uh, sort of pavement situations. If you've ever driven along a country road, that's been in there for a long time, and you come from a fill into a cut, there's invariably a really big bump in the road. So again, the modern day roads, we've always got extra treatment to handle that sort of stuff. And of course, there's all other situations you run into. One side of your road's deep in fill, but the other one's really shallow. What do you do? Oh yeah, and then there's, um, I've got a nice section of embankment where it's quite deep, but then there's a really short section of shallow in between. And it just goes on and on and on, all these different combos of what you've got to do underneath the actual design pavement. So at this point, we'll whip over to Peter's machine, and we won't put a, doing the misjustice of running a PowerPoint on it again. So, still working. In the MTF menu now, where is it? Okay, I'll go to the right side. Again, as Peter alluded to before, under that fixed boxing, you've got that analysed subgrade, which he's pulled up here. Now, it's a beast of a panel. I won't go too much into the numbers on it, but basically this road here, which is uh, missing all my line marking, but I just made a simple road. It's actually just left-hand carriageway, right-hand carriageway. But basically what we do when in the construction game is we just want to look at this left-hand carriageway and right-hand carriageway string, or typically a metre outside those where the subgrade would be. Now, we've got a set of rules. In New South Wales, it's called R44. Brendan sent me through the ones for TMR here. It's all very similar. There are a bunch of rules about what happens depending on how far your pavement and subgrade are from natural surface. Now, I won't go into this panel too much, except the fact up the top, we pick the two carriageway strings we want to do this analysis on. We then pick the tin. We pick a whole heap of parameters here about depths of pavement and subgrade depths and other bits and pieces. And down the bottom, I've simply got a couple of strings that I'm going to write out to. I won't go any further with that. There's no real point. 
So what happens when we run that is it does a bit of magic. It's just a very short little demo here. But this is what happens it creates underneath. And we'll go to the perspective view later. But you'll see here the road is running along the top design surface comes into cut. So here it's in fill, here it's in cut. Now what actually happens underneath is, and this is what you've got to create on site, and this is what happens. In the middle of the fill here, there's a certain fill depth. In this case, it's a typical New South Wales concrete road where there'll be three, 662 millimetres down. However, when it approaches where it comes into cut, this has to be dropped down to extra depth. And what they do is we always excavate of extra distance until we're comfortably into the cut. Now, this is the same rule in Queensland and the same in Victoria. This is a very typical treatment. It's to stop this movement that you get between the cut and fill zones. When we're into the cut, this automatically steps up again. When we're out here and approaching the fill again, you see it steps down. And you'll notice, of course, that this intersection point here is exact. Like most of the other things in V11, we do these exact intersections. We fully evaluate all the modifiers until we get this exact intersection point with a tin. And again, it goes away here, comes across the normal fill, steps down again. Now, without going into it any further, we'll just simply have a look at the perspective view. And we'll shut all that down. And we'll just simply do a drive along there to see what's going on. along something. Of course, now I've got to go back there. Okay, so we drive along. And again, this is a typical situation that when you're driving along the road, you don't know what's going under there in the construction process. It's in fill here. You can see as we're coming up to the cut fill, it drops down into a rather big, and when you see this on site, it's a very big hole. And then when it's comfortably inside the cut, it steps up again. And then we've got a much, in the middle of the cut, the, the uh, depth is much shallower. And again, as we come out of the cut, whoop, there we go. You can see it steps down again, big step, and up in the fill. Now, this is a really nasty one to calculate. And what we see here in the plan view is what's been going on. And you'll notice that these lines are all skewed. This is one of the other one, nasty ones. This cut fill zones, for example, are where the bottom of subgrade runs in the natural surface, but then it's got to create all these lines, 10 metres parallel to... Anyway, if anyone has ever dealt with this, you'll know what I'm talking about. So that's as far as I need to go with it. Again, it's, it's a tool, and on construction sites, this is a pain to calculate. So the idea here was I was trying to automate as much of this stuff. It's to... Oh, and I guess another big point about this is in conjunction with the fixed decisions, as you know with the old decisions, if you make a decision on where the individual cross section is, yes, the edge of pavement is in cut, it's in fill, but you might get noise so that the next section it might be back in fill, then it might be in cut, then finally you really get into it. But when you go through little floating zones, the fixed decisions aren't that effective. If we run a tool like this where we've gone through, analysed the entire pavement, then I know this is distinctly fill. This is cut. This is a transition zone. So when I call my fixed decisions, on these links I can go, well, does my fill string exist? Does my cut string exist? I know I'm distinctly, I've filtered out all that noise and I can make very clean decisions on what I intend on doing. So if you're doing little jobs for typical rural roads in the country or something and you're able to run this analysis, you can generally apply the set of rules and everything, and within a single snippet, you could do your entire subgrade boxing for a typical rural road because you've filtered out the noise. We've enabled this analysis to work out all these basic parameters of what's cut, what's transition, what's fill. And that's as far as I'll go with it. It's, a, it's there, it's almost done, and it's make what of you will. Thanks. <laughs>